good morning praise the lord everybody and so welcome to our daily bread it's your girl lady heather anderson here going into proverbs 25 thank you all for tuning in and um always joining us in our daily bread and as we break open the word of the lord and see what it is that god want us to do amen and so we are in Proverbs 25. Again, get your Bibles. I am in our New King James Study Bible. Love this Bible. All right, 25, end of verse 1. These also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from silver and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. <laughs> Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne will be established in righteousness. And so th this is letting us know th these are wise sayings. Um, and in other words, if we, if there is no wicked one around the king, then everyone would be righteous. They, they used to um, tell us when we was growing up, if everybody told the truth, it would be a different world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king and do not stand in the place of the great. For it is better that he say to you, come up here than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince whom your eyes have seen. Let them call for you. Stay in what God has for you to do. Be busy about the father's business and continue to focus on what he told you to do and they will call you up. Promotion comes from the Lord. Let's remember that. Do not go hastily to court for what will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame? We talked about this the other day. That believers go in the court and suing each other is not the will of God. It's not what the Lord wants for us. The Bible says, when, what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? And sometimes you may not even be wrong, but God will allow you to lose that battle so that the Holy Spirit can bring this back to your remembrance and so that you are not put to shame. I remember when I went to court with, with a tenant that was living in my one of my rental properties. And although it seemed like I needed to go to court to get her out of there, it took longer when I started the court proceeding. Not one time did I say, Father, you get her out of here. But I went to the court and it took longer. And God showed me that everything comes through him. And if he would have said to me, yes, go and, and I will represent you. It would have been a done deal, but I went to the court myself. So he's saying, what you going to do when your neighbor puts you in shame? Debate your case with your neighbor and do not disclose the secret to another. Lest he who hears it expose your shame and your reputation be ruined. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of the fine gold, it is wise, rebuker to an obedient ear. Like the cold of snow in time of harvest, it is faithful, messenger to those who send him. For he refreshes the soul of his masters. 14 says, whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. When you give. When you do for those that are less fortunate and you're doing it as unto the Lord, you don't have to shout it among the mountains. You don't have to take selfies with people with what you're doing and blast it all over social media because you've been a blessing to somebody. Another scripture says if you do that, you have your reward right then. This saying is saying if you, if, if, if you are... Uh, falsely boasting of your giving it's like clouds and wind without rain so therefore you might be maybe you might be embarrassed that you don't give like you should and so you just stretching the truth the bible said you're falsely 
take your falsely boasting that you didn't really do that, but you're saying you did it. By long forbearance, a ruler is persuaded and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. Don't take more than what you need. Seldom set food in your neighbor's house, lest he become weary of you and hate you. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. There we go again. It's, it's lying. False witness is lying. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. Mm. Like one who takes away a garment is cold weather and like vinegar on soda. Look at this is the one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, y'all ready for this? If your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. Who is your enemy? The enemy, Satan, is your enemy. So when he is using people to come against you, you have to first understand that the people are not your enemy, but it's the spirit behind that is using them against you to become your enemy. But if you feed them, if they're hungry and give them something to drink, if they're thirsty, then the Lord will bless you. And then they can get delivered by the word of what? Your testimony. 22 says for so you will heap coals of fire on his head and the lord will reward you just at the moment where they think oh yeah they're going to get you now for sure you're going to be mad you're going to go off you're going to do everything that you think you want to do that is opposite to the life of a believer but if you feed them and give them something to drink the bible says then then heaps then uh Heap, uh, you will heap coals of fire on his head. That means they're going to feel dumbfounded. Like, wait a minute, what just happened? And the Lord will reward you because you're being obedient to his word. The north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with the contentious woman. We, this is about the third or fourth time that I've seen this in since we've been in Proverbs. And so this is important that it is that, that, that women should not be contentious, complaining, nagging, arguing. The Bible said it's better to dwell in the corner, in the attic at the top by yourself than to be listening to your nagging mouth. Ladies, as cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring and a polluted well. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't falter when you get in the presence of people who don't believe or, you know, this new age ministry that's coming out, this new age, I should say, theology that is out, that there is not just one way uh, to the Lord. That, that Jesus is not the only way and that you can be a good person and you can be a person of morals and you can help people and you can give and, you know, you can do LLCs and nonprofits and set up organizations that is set up to help those that are less fortunate. And you don't have it don't take all of what you're doing to please God. Hmm. So this, this new age thing is coming out. And the wicked is, and when I say wicked, those are people that are living contrary to the word of the Lord. And when they are saying all of these things, it may sound good to your ear. But the Bible is saying, don't falter to that. Don't fall for that. If you're righteous, don't fall for it. Because if you do, it'll be like a murky spring and a polluted well. Your water will be polluted. And we know that if we are followers of Jesus Christ, then we have we have experienced the living water. And we don't want our living water to be polluted because we have faltered before the wicked. It is not good to eat to eat much honey. So to seek one's own glory is not glory. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city 
broken down without walls. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Who is ruling your spirit? Is Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Because if you don't have a Lord over your life, then your life, your life here, your spirit will be broken down without walls. But you got to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, the one who is ruler over you. The one who teach, the one who is king of your life. The one who sits on the throne in your life. And if you're on that throne, you need to get off the throne. There's only one person that, sh that needs to be on the throne in your life, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that to you again. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Mm. Are you standing on the word? Are you feeding your spirit more so that your spirit is the one that rules over your flesh? Because whatever you feed more, that's what's going to have more power. Does your spirit have power over your flesh? So again, without the Lord Jesus Christ ruling in your heart, then your spirit man, if, it's not, if you're not feeding it, if you're not operating, if you're not walking in the spirit, if you're not going before the Lord in prayer, if you're not eating his word, then your spirit will be malnutrition and your flesh will win every time. I'm going to read that to you again. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor on this day. I praise you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Father God, for many people as confirmation. Father, I praise you for your knowledge and your wisdom today, and I ask that you touch the heart of your people today. I pray, God, as they go out and about today, whether it's work, Father, or going out on errands or even working from home, Father, I pray that, that they will bask in this word today and that it will do something for them that, it had, that they've never noticed before until today when they went through your word. Father, I pray, God, that you will cover them, that your angels will be uh, around and about them, protecting them from hurt, harm, and danger. I thank you, Lord, that Proverbs 25, as we stand on it today, it shall be our portion. Father, we will, we will feed our spirit more so that it can rule over the flesh, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would have your way in our lives today, God, and get the glory out of everything that we've done. And it is in Jesus' precious name that we praise you. We love you and we thank you. Amen and amen. Well, fam, I pray that your day goes well today and that you remain in the word of the Lord. We will be back here tomorrow, God willing, and we will see you then, still in Proverbs, as we go into the word and see what the Lord is saying. Love you much. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah.